Hey everyone, and welcome back to Salesforce Mojo. Today we're gonna to be talking about what are Commerce Cloud extensions? Now, if you've been paying attention to some of the release notes, you'll notice that we have a new feature that's actually been out in beta here for a bit called extensions. So in today's video, we're going to demystify what Commerce Cloud extensions are, exactly how we would use these in our implementation, and we'll even get to some of the hands-on implementation of this and some of the secrets of how you actually go about implementing this. Let's get into it. Let's first start by breaking down the different type of extensions. The first one and the one that we're primarily gonna be dealing with today is called domain extensions. And domain extensions are kind of what it sounds like when it says domain, but these are specific functional domains or areas such as pricing, promotions, taxes, etc. Second up is we have our endpoint extensions. And today we're not gonna talk about these really in much detail uh, because they're in beta. So as they become available or generally available, we'll come back to endpoint extensions and show some of the specific use cases. Uh, but in short, uh, this is when you can override the default API functionality of the Connect API and do whatever you want inside of it which I think does hold a lot of potential in the future. So within domain extensions, we have what they are calling in the documentation, the cart calculate API. And this allows us to completely customize how the cart and checkout process works. But there's a couple of different sections to actually pull all this off. So I wanted to break this down in a little more depth. The first thing we have is our orchestrator. The orchestrator, think of it as your high level governing uh, logic that says when what executes. Uh, and we'll go into this in a little more depth. The second one is we have our calculators. And these calculators consist of price, tax, inventory, promotions, and shipping. And lastly, we have our services, which include price, tax, and inventory. And all this together allows us to manipulate exactly what gets fired, what happens on every single one of these functional areas, and when they actually get triggered. Uh, so let's actually go into a little more depth of what this entails. So out of all the things we just talked about, what's absolutely required in order to get checkout working? Well, this is probably a little debatable right now because it's still really fresh, but from what I've been able to do in my instance and in using this so far, What's absolutely required is some form of a shipping cart calculator. Now, it really depends on a lot of different factors, like how much of the out-of-the-box functionality you're using with you know, tax and pricing, for instance, uh, and are you planning on using an orchestrator with this or not. Uh, but in short, you absolutely need a shipping calculator of some sort, and you might also need an orchestrator or a tax or a pricing uh, calculator as well potentially servicing as well, but those are definitely optional. The, the uh, cart calculator pieces are the ones that really depend on your implementation. So what does it mean when we say an orchestrator? Well, an orchestrator is an Apex class that allows you to determine what gets triggered and when. So you can see I have a little Lucid chart here on the right-hand side that depicts the different interactions that we can have with the cart in the checkout process. We have pricing, promotion, inventory, shipping, uh, shipping again, because that's post shipping, and taxes. And on the left hand side here, you can see that there's this logic for when does it actually run? And there are different what they call buyer actions that allow you to determine when a thing gets triggered. So out of the box, for instance, run pricing has is checkout started and is cart item changed? And in those two instances, when either the checkout gets started or a cart item is modified in some way, that will actually allow the pricing calculator to trigger. And you can see that's what the orchestrator does. Then what's tied to the orchestrator and what the orchestrator kicks off is the cart calculator. So that's this column that I'm uh, highlighting right here on the screen. And then depending on what you have inside of the cart calculator, it will either go to an external service, it'll do some logic, it won't do anything, you know, whatever you have in that Apex class that you define in that cart calculator. And then depending on if you have a custom service or not, you can see now we're going onto the right-hand side. And the right-hand side is the pricing, the inventory, the tax services. 
So it's all very interrelated, but it all starts with the orchestrator because the orchestrator will tell when to fire what and if it should fire in general. So I thought it would be helpful to maybe pull together a couple of tangible examples because all of this is very theoretical and sounds awesome, but you're probably asking the question just like I did myself, how do I actually use this in my daily project? Well, let's start with the digital product storefront. Uh, I don't know if anyone else who's listening to this has done this use case, but I uh, and our team has done it many times before where we have a digital product that they're trying to sell on the storefront. And when you have digital products, shipping really doesn't matter and inventory doesn't matter in most cases. And how do you actually have a checkout process that you know doesn't show those when they're currently required or at least shipping is required? Uh, and same things could go for taxes as well. Some products have taxes baked into them. So how do we you know, make sure we have the right uh, visualization on the checkout page, uh, but then satisfy checkouts demands? Well, today you'd probably do something like the below where you create a custom lightning lump component that satisfies the checkout requirements for shipping and anything else. And then you create an adapter that basically always returns true and does nothing other than that. Um, so it's definitely doable, but it requires you know front-end work on the checkout process, but also back-end work on the adapter, and you got to make sure that things happen in the right order. Now let's introduce extensions. So what does it look like with extensions? Well, at the very uh, you know end of the day, three steps instead of two, but the work here is, uh, in my opinion, less. So you're creating a custom shipping cart calculator that's populating a $0 shipping amount. And we're actually, we'll show this example uh, here in a moment when I, I get into the hands-on, uh, because I do believe that this would be a good example to have out in the community that is not there now with extensions. And two, you'd actually remove the shipping component from checkout. And with that, plus turning the shipping um, you know, visualization off on the cart summary on the right-hand side, uh, you've done all your work. There's no lightning web component work required. You can do all of this with standard components, uh, which does definitely cut down on the dev time in order to get something that is, uh, you know, a digital shipping type of use case. So that's a one example here. Another example, and I, I mentioned I wouldn't go too far into this, but this example is more on the endpoint extensions. Uh, but, you know, this use case has definitely come up before where you want to show products in a specific way um, and you want to customize the product list page and you want to make sure you pull in some external stuff, or, you know, whatever the use cases might be. In order to do that, you have to create a custom uh, PLP. You probably have to create, you know, that wrapper component. You have to create the Apex class. You have to create test coverage. And this may vary depending on your solution and the intensity and, and all those things, but there's quite a bit that goes into it. With something like extensions, you in theory could register a endpoint class, register it, and now instead of that endpoint going to the standard connect API for the products that are returned, it now goes to your custom product endpoint that does whatever filter or return of data that you're expecting that the default one doesn't do. So you can see just by enabling this endpoint extensions, we've now cut down on a ton of dev overhead in order to uh, make that, that customization. And again, it really comes back to your requirements and you know, is the visualization going to need to be different or not? Um, but just to give you a, a tangible example of how we would use something like this. Now let's actually get into the steps here. Actually setting up a cart calculator is very similar to how you set up your adapters today. But there are a couple of nuances that you need to be aware of uh, that aren't spelled out in the documentation. So I'm going to make this as detailed as possible, and then we're going to do a couple of these live here. So the first one is if you have an existing org you're doing this in, you do need to turn this feature on. And I'll show you how to do that when I get into the hands-on here. If you have an org that is created after February 1st, it's actually going to be on by default. So you don't need to worry about it. The second thing is you need to have your Apex class. It needs to extend the right interfaces. Uh, you can see I have an example of cart extension shipping cart calculator. It's going to vary depending on service versus calculator and what type of service or calculator, uh, but you get the gist there. So create the Apex class, and there's some sample ones out there in the community that I'll show you. Third is you need to register this, just like you register your adapters today, but the mapping is different, and that is where kind of the, the nuance is that I, I created a table to make it easier with. 
And then the fourth one is actually connecting it to your store in the new interface. So let's go into that mapping. So on the cart calculator mapping side, you still have your master label, your uh, developer name, uh, and you also still have your external service provider type. Those are all existing and your uh, external service provider ID, which is your Apex class, those were all there before. The big difference here is that now that we're moving to extensions, every single cart calculator and service is always going to have extension in this type here. That's a big difference from before where it was specific to the type of adapter we're doing. So it's always extensions. And now there's this new field called extension point name. And this is actually where you fill in the specifics. This is where you fill in it's a tax cart calculator, it's a shipping cart calculator, or it's a service provider. Uh, all of those are uh, going to be in this field. And then on the service side, same type of thing here, you will have the actual uh, endpoint, or sorry, I should say the extension point uh, definition here in this field. And you can say this one actually says service. It's pretty easy to tell this is a calculator, this is a service. Um, and then the only other one I haven't shown on here is the orchestrator. So I'm actually gonna pop into the docs so I can show you where I got this information and you can always go there for more reference. Okay, so here we are on the object reference uh, documentation. And if you scroll down, we're actually on the registered external service one, just for reference. If you scroll down, you will find the extension point name field. And you can see here are all the possible values. So I've pulled these directly from this list. There are many in here that I did not put on uh, the sheet because we haven't really touched the endpoints like I mentioned, and these are in beta. Uh, but most of the other ones are referenced up here, um, including you know the promotional one. The other one I have uh, not mentioned on that list is this cart calculate. I actually did want to talk about this for a moment. I'm going to do this by hopping into my org for a second. So we're in my Mojo instance here, and if you go into administration and we go down into extensions, and I'll, I'll cover some of the other differences here uh, when I do a little bit of the hands-on, but you'll see that we have this cart calculate right here. And you're probably thinking, okay, well, what do you mean cart calculate? We didn't talk about that at all. Well, that's actually your orchestrator. So there's a little bit of a difference between what they reference in the documentation and what is currently in the extensions. But for the purposes of today and for based on what I've known, I've talked to the product team about this, the orchestrator references in the documentation is exactly the same as this cart calculate right here. When you register your orchestrator based on these docs right here, you're gonna register it as a cart calculate and it's going to show up in the cart calculate section. Uh, but as you extend, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna have all the orchestrator stuff that we talked about earlier. So I wanted to make sure that was crystal clear because that was very confusing to me the first time I hopped in here and tried to do this. All right, we are in the Salesforce Mojo instance. And the first thing I wanted to do was show those of you who have an existing org how you can enable this functionality in your store. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to hop over into your developer console. And you can see that I've already put the query in here, but they give you a query on this, uh, sorry, this, this uh, tab right here and I'll put this in the description, uh, but you'll be able to find it by going into the extensions uh, guides and then the cart calculates API, uh, and then you will want to be able to uh, run this query. And what this will do is it will pull back all your stores and whether or not this feature of extensions is enabled. And as I mentioned on uh, kind of the, the previous clip here is that this is by default on for any orgs created after Feb 1, uh, but uh, any ones that were created before, it will be off still until you enable it or it's enforced. Um, so you can see the one that we're dealing with here is the Tiny Home Enhanced LWR. So we're gonna go ahead and click into that. You'll double click into it, uh, check the box, and you'll see that there's a little red uh, carrot right here that tells us that there's been a modification on this line and once you see that you'll be able to click save rows right here and you'll see that uh, red carrot go away which means it's successfully saved now if we move back over into our uh, store now you'll want to refresh the whole entire page so that it pulls in the new context of extensions because these pages here are going to be a little bit different than when that is disabled so now that we have that enabled, what we'll do is we can scroll down and look at 
shipping for instance and you'll notice that shipping is going to look a little bit different and also this bottom section takes just a moment to load so give it a second uh, but you can see that now it shows the shipping cart and checkout calculator and the split shipment uh, instead of just the one uh, section that was here before and you'll also see if you go into extensions that this looks a little bit different than it was uh, previously uh, and every single one of them is going to have uh, their own providers at the very bottom here uh, depending on what's available so for tax for instance it has a service class and also a cart and checkout so it's going to have both of those uh, whereas uh, you know shipping uh, didn't uh, doesn't have that um, so that's what it looks like after you've enabled it now once you have that the next step is to get your apex class into the instance uh, so you can actually register it now where you'll go for that is there is a repo here that salesforce maintains called uh, the com commerce extensibility and this space has uh, several different uh, classes and helper classes and examples of how you can use this uh, you'll be able to find that pretty easily by going to the available extensions and going into extension provider examples and clicking this link uh, or you can click the individual links down below which deep dives you into the sections that you're trying to look for now the example that we're going to be running through today is the shipping cart calculator and i'm going to show you two different versions of this both the sample version and then my adaption to that to make that digital example uh, actually work so you can see that uh, what we're doing in this apex class the very first thing is extending the cart extension and then providing it the specific extension type that we are trying to use in this instance we're using the shipping cart calculator but if we were to go into you know the tax section and open up that uh, extension you'll see that it's extending the tax cart calculator uh, so it's pretty self-explanatory in that sense uh, but you will need to do that and then there are some requirements that you'll need to have inside of uh, this uh, actual apex class in order for it to work i'm not going to deep dive in on uh, that in this uh, video but i uh, am happy to do another video if you guys feel like that would be helpful but the first thing we'll do is you'll copy this code and you'll go over into your uh, vs code here let me see if i can get this to be a little smaller here uh, and i have both the standard one this is literally a copy and paste uh, i did change the name a bit because i like to see them grouped here together um, but that's the only thing I did was, was change that name and it's only referenced uh, two places um, so I, I changed both those references and that was it so I, I literally copy pasted made those changes and then pushed it to the org um, and then I made a separate version to do the digital shipping and I'm going to show you that version here now before we start registering it because I, I want to show you guys that as we go throughout checkout so if we go over into the digital shipping version of this it's very similar but we are doing a couple different things and again I'm not going to go too far into the hows and the whys in this but what I did want to point out is you'll notice that uh, instead of going to an external uh, provider or just providing it a specific shipping um, amount which is what this uh, standard one is doing is it's just producing a couple of different variations you can see ground in and next day air are the two versions uh, it is automatically pulling together and the amounts what I'm doing in this digital one is I'm giving it a no shipping and zero dollar amount uh, so very similar to the other one but it took a lot of the complexity out of the other class just to make this one as slim as it possibly could be uh, and and then we're able to push this to the org as well so right now in my instance I have two different versions I have the digital shipping version and I have the actual uh, sample version here so once we have those uh, in the instance, we've satisfied the having the Apex class in there. Now what we need to do is we need to go and register that. And what you need to do to register it is go into Workbench. And once you're in Workbench, you're going to navigate to the Insert section here. And once you're in the Insert section, you will go to Registered External Service and click Next. And this is actually where you will register that class you do have an option to do it through the uh, CLI as well. Um, my preference is to do it through the records here because I feel like you learn a bit more about how the data is structured uh, and, and I am used to doing it in this way. So that's why I'm doing it here. But you do have the CLI version as well. And they do walk through that uh, in the documentation if you're interested. 
But this goes back to the table that I mentioned before. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll try to grab a, a screen grab of that and drop it here at the bottom of the table here for a moment. Uh, but you will take the values that I mentioned there and you'll actually be inserting that into uh, this section right here. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're going to register the digital version of this. So we're gonna do uh, cart calc digital shipping. And we're gonna take the same thing and we're just going to give us some spaces so it looks a little bit better. And then you are actually going to take this value from the table and you're gonna put that in the extension point name. And the type here is always going to be extension. Now the only thing we don't have at this point is we don't have the ID. And you can find that by going into your setup. Uh, this is one way of doing it. You could also do it in Workbench if you'd like. And you can go to Apex Classes and you can go to the filters here by name. And I'm gonna do it by C because I named all with mine starting with C. And you can see I have the digital shipping. So once you're on this page here, the ID is actually in your um, URL. So you can take everything after the F and you'll copy that and you'll bring it over into your insert right here into the ID. And now that we have that in here, this is going to be everything we need. Now I'm gonna to try to click uh, confirm insert here. It's gonna actually give me an error because I already have uh, this inserted with this uh, ID. So it's gonna say, hey, you have got a duplicate uh, for the Apex class, but yours should say uh, success. And once you have that inserted, you're gonna be able to go back into Salesforce and you'll be able to go into the section that you registered it for. So if you're dealing with tax, you will do a different value and it will be available in the tax section here. Uh, but we did the shipping one, so you'll go to shipping and you'll click select provider. And you can see I've registered both of these, both the sample that uh, comes out of the box or comes out of the, the repo that Salesforce has created and the digital version of this, which is this right here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the digital version because I mentioned I wanna show that to you all. And you can see that now we have this registered. It's that easy to connect it to the store. Um, so once you kind of figure out the magic with the extension point name, uh, then it's, it's pretty easy to get connected. All right, so now that we've got that connected, I wanna show one more section here before we jump into the storefront. And that is how to deal with the orchestrators. So if you go over to extensions, I know I mentioned this uh, a moment ago here, but this first tile that pops up is actually your orchestrator. And if you go into the documentation again, you'll notice that we have this commerce domain cart calculate. This again is the orchestrator. Uh, there is no reference to the orchestrator type in here, but in order to register an orchestrator, it's exactly the same process. So first you need to go and create an Apex class, which I'll pull up mine here. This is a copy and paste from the sample. I did make a couple of changes that I will note here uh, down below. You are able to change the actions you use. Uh, so I made a couple of changes to the actions just as I was going through and uh, testing some of these things. And then you can see down in this section here, you can see that it's going to run each one of these when the or when these turn into true, I should say. So when the buyer action is checkout started equals true and the, uh, or sorry, I should say, or the is cart item is changed is true, then it will go through and it will run uh, the pricing, which will go and, you know, attach to your pricing service or, or some of the other extensions in here as well. Um, but you'll notice that I was kind of experimenting with, well, what's the lowest level that you need or what's the least amount of extensions you need in order for checkout to be successful? So what I found was that you absolutely do need prices, otherwise it will not run through uh, and pull pricing into your cart. Uh, you do not need promotions. Uh, so I have that commented out here just for testing purposes. I have um, inventory commented out, um, at the same reason. You do need the, um, the run ship and the run post ship. Uh, and then I have taxes commented out. So with this setup right here, you can actually get through checkout with kind of the, the minimum requirements, again, in that light of a digital um, checkout. You know, you possibly don't want inventory, possibly don't want promotions. Uh, you could easily uncomment these and flip these back on. But this is what mine looks like. And so this is why when I run through checkout, uh, I won't have any taxes in there, but you absolutely can go to the repo that uh, Salesforce has in the, uh, the sample 
and actually uh, put this in here, register it, um, and then actually attach it and run all the way through uh, with taxes as well. But let's go ahead and go into Workbench and we're gonna go to the registered external service. And once we're here, it's gonna be very similar. Uh, you can call this whatever you like. Uh, I have been doing kind of this orchestrator, cart, calc, uh, and then this one is like a digital one. So call it whatever you'd like. Um, this is actually the developer name, so no spaces. And I grab that, put it down here, give it some spaces. And then you'd go in and actually put extensions right here. Uh, and then you'd actually go and grab your ID. Again, I'm not gonna do this because I've already registered mine, so it'll give me the error just like before. Uh, would you go to the same place uh, that I mentioned before to grab the ID, and then you click confirm. And once you've done that, you can come over here and click select provider and one will pop open for you and you'll be able to confirm and attach that to your store. And now that we've done that, you can go back into Experience Builder and once this loads, we'll actually go into checkout and because we've changed this to a digital uh, shipping uh, capability, we'll move over and actually take out the shipping uh, which is a pretty nice uh, feature of moving to this digital extension here because you actually can just remove that component altogether from checkout versus having to do a bunch of overriding. So see on mine, I've actually already done it. Uh, so typically there's a section right between the two of these uh, called delivery or shipping method and it has the uh, shipping method component right in it. And you'll notice on mine I have uh, the contact information, I have the shipping address, I have the purchase information and billing down here, but I don't have any shipping. And there's no custom components at all on this checkout right here. Uh, the other thing I've done over here is I've just unchecked the box for shipping. Uh, and I could do the same for taxes because I've turned taxes off. And I could actually do the same thing for mo promotions because I've also turned promotions off. So if you wanted a really sleek and clean checkout with none of those bells or whistles, uh, you could have something like this. Uh, and we'd publish this and we'll actually go through a checkout here in a moment. Okay, so now that we have that published, uh, we can go in and uh, do a login here as one of my users and I'm gonna go into checkout and if everything was uh, set up correctly for us and actually deployed into the instance and connected for the extensions, we should be able to see uh, that we are only seeing subtotal on the right hand side. We're only seeing, seeing the shipping uh, address uh, we've marked billing addresses the same and we have our purchase order here. So we dump this purchase order in and click place order. It should proceed correctly, giving us an order summary. Looks like it did. We've got uh, UZR, so let's go find UZR here for us. Uh, let's see, lost my tab here. Let's go back a couple. And if we go into order summaries, we should see UZR, yep. And we have the uh, sync that I purchased, uh, no taxes, and we've got our no shipping line that I mentioned in our extension uh, with zeros across the board here. Uh, we do have our uh, purchase order in here correctly and we've got our shipping address. So everything looks uh, successful. And that took us only you know a couple of minutes to take some of the out of the box things in here make some modifications for the digital one, turn off some of the other uh, features in the orchestrator, um, no custom components in uh, the storefront and checkout. So overall uh, made that process very clean and easy for us. All right, and with that, we have successfully gone through and implemented a couple of extensions. Uh, hopefully the uh, you know framework and um, concepts of extensions now make a bit more sense uh, and you know you know what the difference between an orchestrator, a calculator, and a service is, uh, in between you know domain extensions and the endpoint extensions coming in the future. Uh, feel free to add any questions to uh, the comments. I'll uh, I'll try to respond uh, the best I can. And don't forget to like the video as well. It it does help uh, reach more uh, of the audience out there. So appreciate you watching and see you soon.